put our hands together. Come on. Good. 
you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Come on. Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let. Come on, we sing it even louder.
church all over this place if you believe that would you lift up a shout of praise to the way maker to the king of kings and the lord of lords come on i can't help but to get out of my head king david before he was a king 12 13 years old standing in front of a giant standing in front of a battle-torn warrior and he said you come at me with sword and javelin and spear but i come at you in the name of the lord for the battle is his and i just can't help but to think in this room how many people you need to declare today you come at me with disease you come at me with drama you come at me with family disputes you come at me with financial hardship but i come at you in the name of the Lord, because the battle is His. Amen. Buongiorno tutti. This is Pastor Jennifer Pasquale coming to you from the International Christian Fellowship of Rome. I want to welcome you to our service wherever you're watching from today. I believe the Lord brought our past together for such a time as this. Today, a message for you. So lean in and hear what the Lord has to say in this service. God bless you. Good morning, International Christian Fellowship Rome, and thank you to our daughter, Jessica, and the worship team from the Bridge Church in California. Today, they have reminded us that our prayers are reaching the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. You might see that I am surrounded by some phases of prayer, which I will get to in just a little bit. But will you join me right there where you are while you're enjoying this service with your family and your home and your office? Will you just lift your hands with me? And we are going to declare, Father, you are the way maker. You have miracles in motion for your child today. Whatever we have need of, when we will stay steadfast in trusting you and in praying with great faith, Lord God, you will move mountains into the sea and you will bring us the miracles and the victories that we need. We thank you and we bless your service. We bless your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, I want to talk to you about something very powerful about prayer. Faith moves our prayers, but the kind of prayers is what I want to talk to you about. Prayers that shake heaven. Can you look at somebody and say, it's going to shake heaven? Can you imagine that kind of prayer? Prayed with spiritual dominion and authority to the power of God with one word. In one word, Jesus, everything can change. 
The situation can change. Your peace and understanding about the situation can change. The authority of God and everything about our life is dependent upon the name of Jesus and having those prayers that will shake some stuff loose, okay? I've got another video we're gonna use in the next coming weeks, but I want you to know that I believe and I have experienced personally that faith moves my prayers. Even if I have a little prayer, faith, I keep praying no matter what. Prayers move our mountains so that we can witness miracles, so that we can testify to the glory of God. I want you to look in Acts. The believers in Acts chapter 4, it says after they had prayed, after they had prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all, say all, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly, Acts 4.31. So these believers had wonderful success in prayer even though they were experiencing some fierce opposition. Think about that early church. Think about the persecution. Think about the difficulties um, that they must have had. But we read that on this one occasion, even under extremely difficult circumstances, when they prayed, the place was shaken and they were all touched with the power of the Holy Spirit. So the first thing I want to do is give you three things that must be happening when we pray. Persistent believing prayer. We give ourselves to prayer. You just got to do it. And number three, it needs to be possibility focused. So what does the Bible say about persistent believing prayer? We see in Acts chapter 12 that Peter was in prison. But through the persistent believing prayer of the local church, he was miraculously delivered out of that prison. Now think about the prisons that we may be in today. You might be actually in a prison and watching this. I don't know. But you might also be in a prison of bondage, of fear, of captivity, of quarantine, of restriction, of sickness, of turmoil. But the Bible says that when we pray, the walls were shaken and Peter was miraculously delivered. So I want you to look at Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. It was about that time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among them, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. That's a lot. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. Verse 6. So Peter was kept in prison. This is the important verse. Verse 6. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church... That's you and me. We are the church. We are the bride of Christ. The church was earnestly praying to God for him on his behalf. We look at verse 7. It says, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up and said, quick, get up. And Peter did and his chains fell off. You see, when you are doing that persistent believing prayer, the angel of the Lord will come to you, will say, wake up your faith, quick, respond. And you get up and the chains of doubt, the chains of fear, the chains of unbelief will fall off. You will not be in bondage to those things that are binding up your prayers from, from seeing victory. So the angel says then, put on your clothes and sandals. God is very practical. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around me and follow him. And Peter followed him out of the prison and he wasn't even sure what the angel was doing he thought it was a vision they passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city it opened for them by itself and they went through it when they had walked the length of one street suddenly the angel left peter because god knows when we can handle it and peter came to himself and said now i know i want you to say that 
Now I know. Have you been through some things in difficulty? And God answered your prayer and he sent an angel to walk alongside of you. And when you get the victory, I have. This week even, I have been able to say, God, now I know without a doubt the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me, it says in verse 11, from Herod's clutches and from anything that the people were wishing would happen. You see, they may have been a persecuted church, but they were certainly a powerful church. The true church in the last days, which I believe we are in, will be that kind of church. God wants you to be that kind of church that you will say, surely I know, without a doubt, God has delivered me. That is the power of persistent believing prayer. The second thing the scripture says is that we have to give ourselves to prayer. It says in Acts 6, 4, the apostles knew the secret to effective leadership and spiritual power when they said these words, Acts 6, 4, but we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Notice they said we give ourselves, indicating their willingness to persist in prayer because prayer takes time. It takes processes. And the disciples were saying we will regularly study God's word and we will see the spiritual power on our Christian ministry and service in our daily life. I can tell you there's no other way, no other way to receive God's power. You can't walk in your victory with someone else's faith. You gotta have your own faith, amen? You can't walk in your victory with someone else's faith. God wants to give you victory. He wants your prayers to touch heaven. He wants your prayers to be full of faith. And so remember to give yourself to prayer and the study of God's word. And the third thing is to be possibility focused. God delights in the prayers of his children and he wants us to come to him at any hour of the day or night because his ears are always open to our petitions and our request. Psalm 34, 17 says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them from their troubles. Proverbs 15, eight says, the Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. You see all, say all, all of God's unlimited resources are available to us through prayer, if we will only believe that with God, all things are possible. You see, I said you can't do it with someone else's faith because God wants you to believe. He wants you to be the one that says the chains are falling off. The doubt is pushed away. I'm casting that fear into the sea of forgetfulness because my God is the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. When we read about the lives of those in the past, whom God used mightily in his service, we find that they were faithful and persistent in prayer and not only believed that God would answer their prayers, but counted on him to do what he had promised to do for them. I want you to think for a minute about Moses in the wilderness. He did not give up when he faced a Red Sea experience and the armies were coming after them. And I'm sure in that crowd of a million people, there was a few people telling him, you lost your mind. What do you think you're doing? You can't do this. There's a sea in front of us. But Moses did not give up. He had persistent believing prayer in the power of God. Think about the boys in the fiery furnace. You know them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know that they withstood the fire and ultimately, there was a fourth man in the fire who saw them through the fire until they got out on the other side without even the smell of smoke. You know, as I was thinking about prayers and thinking about things that cause us to really intensify our prayers, what does the smell of smoke mean in that story? That maybe the turmoil, maybe the difficulty, maybe the deep valley or the high mountain that you had to cross would stain you with the smell of smoke as if 
there was some ripple effect of the, that terrible sickness or that problem, but they got out of that fire without even the smell of smoke, no doubt, no fear, full confidence that God would hear their prayers and deliver them. There's another person I want to tell you about this morning. Her name is Corey Ten Boom, and her prayer life changed her destiny. Now, some of you may not know Corey, but Corey Ten Boom was a woman whose family helped the Jews escape from being executed. And during that time, all of Corey's family was arrested and imprisoned. When her 84-year-old father was told he would be condemned to death for saving these people, he responded, it would be an honor to give my life for God's chosen people. Remember I said they gave themselves to prayer? It would be an honor to give prayer for someone else on behalf of someone else. He died soon after in that Schembengen prison. And Corey and her sister were deported to the notorious Ravensburg concentration camp. Now here's what I want you to know. The sisters were able to stay together throughout their imprisonment until her sister Betsy died on December 16th in 1944. Just days before her death, Betsy said these words to her sister, Corey, which many people still quote today. She said, there is no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. There is nothing so hard that God's power is not broader and wider that he will see you through. She said, Corey, they'll listen to you because we've been here in this sacrifice, in this prison. Twelve days later, Corey was miraculously released from prison due to a clerical error. But remember, her sister Betsy had died. And twelve days later, because Corey didn't give up, because she persistently prayed, she was released. And I want you to know that a week after her release, all of the other female prisoners from her age group were killed. Corey knew the value of praying, possibility-focused prayers. And during her time in that concentration camp, she and her sister were hold worship prayer services with the other ones. And Corey wrote in her book, The Hiding Place, at first, Betsy and I called these meetings with great timidity and probably uncertainty. She said, but as night after night after night went by, we grew bolder. And so that brings me to point number four, the process of answered prayer. I want you to begin to look with me at some of these processes. You see, you have a God-given authority, an anointing to pray in accordance with God for his will, his way, and his wonder, but you cannot give up. You've got to pray with that possibility focus and that perseverance. 1 John 2.20 says you have an anointing, an authority from the Holy One, and you know the truth. I'm encouraging you today to use that anointing and that confidence in your prayer process. I have to tell you that this past week and in this past month, we've had numerous people who have encountered very dark sicknesses, very dark places. And I've been up in the middle of the night praying and interceding. But I know that even though there may be delays in the answer, listen to me, even though there may be a delay in the answer, there is never defeat for the child of God. So I want you to look. The first thing you've got to do when you pray, we're going to have nine steps. And they're not just easy in a line. And today I have them on funny signs and different things because of quarantine. I can't use people to illustrate this with me. You've got to start praying. If you never start, you're not going to ever see the end of it, right? So first, the Bible says to start. Purify yourself. Repent and prioritize God's will. And believe. Ask, believe, confess, the Bible says. So i got to start the prayer, and I'm in this journey, and this thing has happened, and I'm surrounding it, and I'm starting my prayer, and I come to another phase. And this phase says, continue past the obstacle. 
You see, it wasn't enough to start praying because then when I was praying, then, oh no, here's another obstacle. Here's another element of the sickness. Here's another symptom of disease. Here's another problem with the bank. Here's another, I got another no, another rejection. There's an obstacle, but I'm going somewhere. I'm going to the place where the answer is coming. I can't stop at the obstacles. I have to continue. And then sometimes I have to intensify my prayer with fasting. The Bible says that some things don't happen but without prayer and fasting. God wants you to sacrifice yourself, to say, Lord, I, it's not about me. It's not about my desire. I am praying in accordance with God's will. And I will let faith arise when I begin to fast. Step four, maybe I fasted, but I didn't get the answer. Maybe I got past the obstacle, but I still don't have the answer. Keep praying. Keep praying because then I got to stand fast on his promises. It says they believed in the word of the Lord. I got to stand fast on his promises. It only takes a seed the size of a mustard seed to have that faith that moves the prayers. But I got to know his promises. I need to know the word of God. I need to exercise the authority of God's word in my life. So if you don't know what to pray, I encourage you to begin to pray scripture. Pray the scripture, Lord, in your word, you said this, by your stripes I am healed. That you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. That you give me peace that passes understanding. That the joy of the Lord is my strength. You pray scripture and stand and keep praying. After we stand fast on his promises, we pray with believing people. We pull others around us. The Bible says where two or three agree as touching anything, it's done. We need to be reminded that we're not alone in the waiting. You see, this last week, our granddaughter was very sick in the hospital. And I needed some believing prayer partners to pray with me, to send me scriptures, to remind me that the angel of the Lord was standing on guard and would be moving on her behalf. And I can tell you that today she's not in the hospital. God is in the healing business. But believing people stood with me in the gap so that we would see the miracle working power of God. We're not alone in the waiting. But then we go to step six, and all those believing people prayed, and we still don't have the answer. What do we have to do? Keep praying. You have to keep praying. You have to pray boldly. You have to stay in the right mindset. In the same way I started the prayer, God, I know that you can do this. And I've been through these phases, and I've got all these scriptures from my believing prayer partners I'm going to keep praying until I see the answer. I'm going to keep trusting and believing. I'm going to keep believing boldly. So important to stay in that right mindset. Then I need to take a pause sometimes from the asking and begin to just say with thanksgiving, Lord, I thank you in advance. That's what faith moves our prayers up is. Thank you that you're healing. Thank you that the symptoms are diminishing. Thank you that you're giving doctors wisdom. Thank you that you're diminishing those bills. Thank you that you're opening up that contract. Thank you that you're giving me peace that passes understanding. And you're giving wisdom to me. And you're giving me the joy of the Lord so I will have strength even when I feel spiritually or physically weary. The answer is almost here. Now there could be a whole bunch of other steps and a whole bunch of other obstacles. And if I had time, I would even show you how sometimes I got to go back to pass the obstacle again. And then I got to run back to believing people again. It's not linear always. Sometimes it's kind of like this. It's kind of a mix up of things. But I keep praying with thanksgiving. And then, so important, I never give up. I never give up. I wouldn't stop praying for someone that I loved. I wouldn't stop praying to my God who has always been there for me. I will not stop praying. I will not relent. The answer is almost here. The enemy is defeated. We can trust in the Lord with all our heart. Because you see, right over here, the answer is now. That's that final step. Pastor Rick says it all the time. You're one prayer away from your miracle. What if you were over there on step one 
Or step three, when you had to do all that fasting and you didn't see the answer. You would never see this answer. But this answer is here. That getting out of the hospital, that, that specific diagnosis so we can pray specifically. And yes, sometimes even heaven is the answer. But I can tell you this, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And until the day that we stand in heaven before the Lord, we trust him. We believe him for the miracle now, for the answer now, for our faith and our prayers to be now. Because we're going to give God the victory. We're going to give God the glory. We're going to share the victory. We've been talking about praying with that spiritual tenacity. That dominion authority, it's not in my needs. It's not in my character. It's in the character of God that I pray. I don't always have it in my mind that I can do it. But the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So today I want to encourage you. I'm going to stand right here by this answer as I close this prayer today. This message today. And I want to remind you to start the prayer. Keep the prayer. Keep praying, keep believing, and remember that God is with you. He will help you in every circumstance if you will have persistent believing prayer. If you will do as the disciples did and give yourselves to prayer. And to be possibility focused, like Corey Ten Boom, who rescued many, many people. And God rescued her, but she never gave up. There are so many stories in the Bible of people who never gave up. Can you imagine even Jesus on the cross? On the cross of suffering, he could have given up. He could have said, I don't want to do this. But he did it. And by his stripes, you are healed. By the blood of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. And so this morning, maybe you've come to a point in your life when you haven't been so sure about your prayer life. I want to remind you. It's God's power. It's God's authority. And it is the victory that is just ahead for you if you will not give up. So today I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God would redeem your life, redeem your days, and redeem your faith so that you won't be trying to do it on somebody else's faith. Do it on your faith. Do it on faith in Jesus Christ. Be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that you inspired holy men to record the accounts of so many people in history that witnessed, like Peter did, the angel of the Lord, setting them free from the prison of bondage, of fear, of doubt, of discouragement, of containment. And God, we will not let our faith be contained. We will not let our faith be pushed down. We will not let our, our, our prayers be defeated. We will ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come so that the very place where we are praying, the walls will be shaken and we will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit this morning. The word of the Lord is for you, that the power of the Holy Spirit will see you through, that you are not in the waiting alone, and that he has a victory just ahead if you will keep praying. This morning, if you have sin in your heart, if you have really turned your back on God and gotten lukewarm in the midst of cold, dry, lukewarm prayers, God wants to redeem that. So will you pray this prayer with me? Will you open your heart and say, God, I want to stay on the potter's wheel. I want to be so close to God that I hear him when he says, Angel, get down there and help my daughter. Get down there and help my son. Father, right now, repeat this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my doubts. To help me to trust in you 100%. And Lord, above all else, that you will be the Lord of my life. That I will not pray in my own character. But I will pray standing on the character of God. The way maker. The miracle worker. The promise keeper. And I will give you every day and every circumstance. And I will not relent until I see the victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now maybe you're also listening today and you have a sickness or a turmoil something that has been much like this a process i want to encourage you 
Start the prayer. Continue past the obstacles. Stay steadfast on his promises. Intensify with fasting. You know, fasting is putting aside food. You can have a liquid fast. You can have a Daniel fast. You can research fasting. But you say, God, I'm going to remove these things and I'm going to devote this time in prayer and fasting to believe you for this breakthrough. I've witnessed it this week myself, friends. I know that God will hear your prayers. And I know that the victory is now. You'll give God the glory and you'll pick yourself up and say, I believe. Will you do that? Will you stand up for a minute right where you are? Will you say, I believe. I believe that God will do it. No matter how dark it looks, no matter how dim it, it seems, the victory is coming and I will not stop praying because faith moves my prayers. And I'm praying for you this week that it will be a week where you experience victory in peace, in joy, and in answers. To God be the glory. God bless you. We love you. We hope that you will join us online um, for our classes, for our services, for our prayers, for our midweek prayer on Wednesdays and Thursday Connect. There's also instructions there for you on how to give of your tithes and your offerings because the work of the ministry goes forward. But even more than that, as you give, God blesses you because it's scriptural. It's according to his word. So as we do the process, God gives us the promises. I bless you this week, and I know that God is going to open the windows of heaven and bless you beyond what you could even ask or think. That's my prayer for you today. I love you. Have a fantastic week. Hey, thank you for listening to the message today. And I want you to be encouraged that if you have decided to invite Jesus into your life, it's going to be the best prayer you've ever prayed. And I want to pray it with you. So you, will you repeat after me? Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my life, forgive me of my sins, and from this day forward, Jesus, I ask you to be the leader of my life, and I will give you all in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for praying for that. And if you have invited Jesus in, you'll see the information below. I want to hear from you so that I can be praying with you on this new journey that God is putting you on. I also want to say maybe the message touched you today, wherever you're listening around the world, and you're saying, Pastor Jen, I need prayer for my miracle. I need prayer for God to intervene. I want to pray that prayer for you. And I want to believe that God has never run out of miracles. And today, He has a miracle in motion for you. So Father, I pray right now for my friends that are listening to the message and asking you for a miracle in their life. God, would you intervene? Would you show them the miracle in the making, the evidence of what they have been asking for as they follow you, as they serve you, as they trust you. And today I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the favor of God would flow and open those doors that have been closed, heal those bodies that have been sick and bring that heart to life that has been weary. I thank you, God, that you have amazing miracles ahead for every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. And so today, friends, as you join with our family here in Rome at the International Christian Fellowship of Rome, we are truly touching one, touching Italy, and reaching nations. Give us a note. Send us an email. We're on this journey together, and God has great plans ahead for you.